I'm Elaine Bayless with Inspire Coaching and this is part two of my Save Your Time, Save Your Life video. You've already had a chance to watch part one. This part is all about time thieves and how you can prevent time thieves from stealing your time. This video I think is about 15 minutes. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope it gives you some great ideas and strategies for keeping your time to yourself. Thanks so much and enjoy. Time thieves live in quadrant four. Now, if you recall, we talked about the cubby square, the four quadrants or the four lists, and all of your tasks are either urgent and important, urgent and not important, not urgent but important, or not urgent, not important. Time thieves are not urgent and not important. So what are they? The squeaky wheel. Your car runs out of gas. Your kid gets a nosebleed. You go into the hospital for an emergency appendectomy, okay? These are the squeaky wheels. Stuff happens. The beautiful thing about using the tips that I taught you about working with the cubby square and the other things we're gonna talk about once you've got those kind of in place and you've gotten real clarity on what is truly important and what you are going to spend your time doing, you have that margin. So when the squeaky wheel pops up, you can take the time to handle it without 15 other things failing. The squeaky wheel is prone to stealing your time. When you're overcommitted, the squeaky wheel gets all of your time. And then things that you had time to do that you had a lot of time to do, they, go, they disappear because of the squeaky wheel. It takes all that time. And then suddenly those things that weren't urgent are now urgent. Then there's the internet. Woohoo, the internet. Um, and you know, down here I have a picture of TV. I'm thinking about Netflix and Hulu and all those streaming services, all those great ways to watch TV on your on demand and TiVo and DVR. Does anyone ever just sit down and watch TV anymore? I mean, <laughs> having the internet at hand, you need to look something up. Today I was baking something and I needed to find a substitute. I pulled up my phone, I looked up the substitute and I continued baking. That's great, the internet's a wonderful tool. But we all know that, you know, you start out, you're in the doctor's office, you're just randomly, you know, surfing the net or whatever and then you get called back and you're actually like, he interrupted me. And then you keep going back to your phone to read up this article that you were just looking at because you had time to kill. So it starts grabbing your attention and distracting you. The third, oh, the third time thief are the shoulds. And you can see my little hands pointing. Here's the thing about shoulds. Shoulds masquerade as important tasks. You think a should is important but it's only important to other people. This is a really, really essential distinction of what I'm talking about because the shoulds are what fill up your schedule with stuff that you really don't care about. So you really wanna get a lot of clarity around what do you do because you think it's important what versus what do you do because everyone else thinks it's important. And this is all about stuff like the mommy wars, you know, and working moms get hit with this all the time. And, you know, what should you do? And there's just all this common knowledge about what is best for your children and what you should do for your kids and how you should handle holiday and how you should handle Christmas and Hanukkah and how you should handle Valentine's Day and birthday parties. And it doesn't matter if you spend $5,000 on a birthday party because you have to invite every kid from their class. And just all this stuff. So let's just step back and think, okay, what am I doing? Because it's important to someone else rather than what it's important to me. That's where we really want some clarity. So, all right, we've talked about what the time thieves are. Let's talk about how to do battle with them. How can we keep them in quadrant four and keep them from taking over our life? First, we'll talk about the squeaky wheel. The best way to avoid a squeaky wheel is maintenance. Think about your car. You get oil changes, you put gas in it, you get it tuned up, you get the air, tires rotated. These are things that maintain your car so that you don't end up with a literal squeaky wheel. 
This applies to our personal life, too. So here's the thing. When I was in my 20s, my early 20s, I made the very bad decision to stop going to get my teeth cleaned. I didn't go to the dentist for two years. And guess what? I got cavities, massive cavities, major cavities. When I did go to the dentist, I had, it was ridiculous how many cavities I had. And even though I had dental insurance, which was actually pretty good insurance, I met my maximum and I paid out of pocket and I literally could have saved myself a thousand dollars at least if I had just gone to the dentist every six months and gotten my teeth cleaned. That's all I would have taken. And so because I did, I made the poor choice not to do basic maintenance for my teeth, I ended up spending a lot of time and money for this squeaky wheel of my rotten cavity teeth. Self-maintenance, self-care, this is important. I'm not saying how you need to do this, but I am saying find a doctor, find a chiropractor, find somebody to address your health and then do what that person tells you to do to maintain your body and your health. That's just very important. And this applies across the board to every area of your life. Maintain your relationships. The more you can do up front to keep things running smoothly, you know, the, the better your life will be and the fewer squeaky wheels you will have. Another thing, be proactive. Take proactive action. It's sometimes life just happens and then you have to step back and redo some things and take some time. However, and, and that is a time thief because it's stealing time away that you didn't expect to have to spend, but if you have already gone ahead and implemented a, war, a life and a calendar that has margin, it's much easier to tend to those squeaky wheels. So to maintain, maintain, be proactive, take, take charge of things, do things before they need to get done. These are how you um, keep the squeaky wheels from popping up. You take good care of yourself. You take good care of your possessions. You put the effort and the time into your important relationships. And that's how you keep your squeaky wheels to a minimum. The internet. TV streaming, right? Plan ahead. If you're going to sit down and watch infotainment of any kind, you know, watch YouTube videos, watch um, Netflix uh, series, plan ahead how long you're going to do it. How many videos are you going to watch? Um, you're watching something on streaming uh, Hulu, something like that, you know that thing's going to come up with the next episode, boom. And if you don't do anything, it's going to show you the next episode. So take action. Decide how many episodes of this show am I going to watch. And then when you're done with that number, click the back button, click the cancel button on your remote control, and get up, turn the TV off. Planning ahead as part of that proactive action, planning ahead how much time you're going to give the internet and give TV that really helps you stay on top of how much time you're spending. So you say, I'm going to spend five minutes on Facebook. When the five minutes is up, you stop. Now, how do you do that? Another way, besides making a decision, use a timer. Almost every tablet and phone has some sort of built-in timer. So if you only want to spend five minutes on Facebook, set a timer to five minutes, then log into Facebook. When the timer goes off, you put Facebook down. And yeah, you know, there's a little flex room here and there. Maybe you're right in the middle of reading a very important post. That's fine. Give yourself 30 seconds more. You know, maybe set an alarm and then hit the snooze button. But by setting a timer, you're really going to take control. And we all know how it is. We, we get in, we go to bed, we pick up our phone, we want to check the weather, we want to check the news. And then it's been an hour. Where did that time go? So the timer is your way of reminding you, hey, you have other things to do. You have things that you care about, things that are important to you. So that's what you want to do to manage the internet and the information time thief. Finally, there are the shoulds. Ah, the shoulds. I think I already mentioned that shoulds masquerade as, er as important, but what they really are are things that are important to other people, not to you. And we've just gone through this whole thing about how to clarify your priorities. If the statement has a should in it, it probably isn't your priority. Should is a very negative word. It has this huge impact on us. 
So how do you get away from the shoulds? Well, first of all, recognize when you say something should happen, that word should be a red flag. See, I just did it. It should be. When you hear the word should, train yourself to think red flag. Okay, why? Ask yourself the question, why should I do this? Is it in line with my priorities? Or is it an expectation that someone else is putting on me? And that's how you handle a should. Ask yourself the question, why? Why should I? Is this really important to me? Okay, so I hope you found that interesting and informative about the time thieves. I hope it gave you some good, practical, actionable ideas about how to keep your time thieves to a minimum. Again, always please, if you want to talk to me, go to talkwithelaine.com. You can schedule a completely free conversation and we can talk specifically about what are the time thieves in your life and how we can create some practical action steps that you can put into effect today to get those things out of your calendar.